Hey guys, what's up? It is Matt Lane, and today we're going to be covering tips and tricks on how to handle Father Gascoigne. This is actually the first required boss of the game, as Cleric Beast is actually optional and not required to push the story forward. Normally, backline would be irrelevant for how to handle a boss, but in this case, this backline and this side story will actually allow you to have access to an item that will be very key to handling this boss. This should go without saying, but just so I can say I told you so, spoilers ahead. As you are exploring the depths of Central Yarnum, you will come across an NPC who is a little girl. This little girl will tell you that her mother has gone missing in search of her father, who has been gone on the hunt longer than he should have been. The little girl will tell you that the mother is going to be wearing a red jeweled brooch and is unmistakable because of its beauty and its size and its color. When telling the little girl that you will help her find her mother, she will give you an item called the Tiny Music Box. If you open the item and read the description, you will actually see the names of both the mother and the father. Specifically, the description says, Inside the lid is a small scrap of paper, perhaps an old message. Two names can be made out, however faintly, Viola and Gascoigne. At the time of reading this, this will have no meaning other than just to let you know her parents' name. But moving forward, there are two types of people who handle Father Gascoigne. There are those who have seen this beforehand and have become really depressed once they walk into the battle, and those who have no clue. For those who have read it, this is mildly upsetting knowing that you are about to go and kill this little girl's father. For those without, you may never actually have figured that out, but now you have. That's all the backline that will be needed for this boss. Now let's go ahead and get started on some tips and tricks for how to best handle Father Gascoigne. Unlike the Cleric Beast, for this boss, it may be a wise idea to go ahead and upgrade your weapon a time or two. This is not necessary per se, but it is certainly not going to hurt. And if you have the time and patience, you can actually get your weapon all the way up into a plus three before fighting Father Gascoigne. A plus one or two weapons should be more than enough, but if you are having trouble, a plus three would definitely help even the playing ground. Although the only four weapons you have been exposed to at this point will all be fine, there are definitely some that will work better than others. Although using the axe will be fine as long as you know how to use it, using a saw cleaver or saw spear will be a much better option as it has better speed that is mixed with damage. The cane is also a viable weapon for speed, but it will not yield the damage that the saw spear and saw cleaver do. One of the biggest tactics you can use to give yourself the upper edge for this boss is without a doubt parrying. Now if you're having some trouble with parrying, there are plenty of enemies in Central Yarnum that can give you great practice for this. Most of the enemies in this area are very slow, which gives you a very wide window of when to parry. A more suggested enemy would be the Huntsman's Minions. These are a better enemy to practice on because they will attack a little faster than some of the enemies. Their windup is very easy to detect, but they also hit very quickly after their windup, which gives you excellent practice for how Father Gascoigne is going to be. Once you have mastered pairing, you are definitely going to want to use it right out the gate as soon as this boss battle starts. I say that because during phase one, Gascoigne is a lot easier to parry. Throughout this boss battle, if you find yourself in trouble or you just need to gather yourself to get your rhythm back, there are plenty of trees and tombstones scattered all over the area. To a new player, this may just seem like simple decoration for the area, but in actuality, it is a great design that actually helps the player to separate himself from the boss so that he has time to heal and time to recover himself. Once phase two hits, Gascoigne will extend his axe to where it is in this long mode. When this happens, pairing becomes a lot more difficult as the timing has to be much quicker. That being said, if parrying is not working for you, you need to learn to be very patient during this phase. Unlike the Cleric Beast where you can just get in and wail until you have no stamina left, you definitely do not want to do that with this second phase of Gascoigne. All you want to do is get close to him, get one, maybe two hits, and then back away. Continue to use the trees and tombstones for cover as you dwindle down his health bar and push him into phase three. Phase three will be completely unmistakable as he will suddenly hold his head and turn into a giant beast looking very similar to a werewolf. This is where that back line that we discussed earlier in this video comes into play. Having your tiny music box equipped, you now want to use this item. When doing this, as the little girl stated, the music box begins to play Father Gascoigne's favorite song. 
This causes him to remember his family. As such, it causes him great pain, and he begins to hold his head and scream in his self-pain. This gives you plenty of time to get behind him, get multiple hits in, or maybe even get a backstab and a visceral. In a perfect world, you would want to finish Gascoigne off before he snaps back into reality and begins to attack you again. If this does happen, you need to be very, very patient with Phase 3. He becomes insanely aggressive and leaves very few windows for you to heal or get a lot of hits in. That being said, you really only get one hit, get out, use the trees and the tombstones for cover, and repeat. Once you have taken Father Gascoigne out, take a bow and pat yourself on the back. Because believe it or not, this boss is actually a showstopper for a lot of speedrunners. None of the other bosses are really going to have any backline, so to give you some incredibly depressing closure, after defeating Gascoigne, you will see an item that is above a building. When you make your way to it, you will see that the item is hovering above what appears to be a lifeless woman. And your worst fears are realized when you pick up the item and it is none other than the red jeweled brooch that the little girl had told you that her mother would be wearing. And if that wasn't depressing enough, to give you an extra spoiler, you have the option to go back to the little girl. You can either tell her that her parents have died, or there are two safe place locations that you can try to let the little girl make her way to. The depressing and spoiler part of this is none of those options will allow you to save this little girl. She will die no matter what you do. Have fun sleeping at night, and now you can be depressed just like the rest of us. But that is going to be it for this episode. I hope that these tips and tricks serve you well as you try to take down a very formidable Father Gascon. As always, thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe for anything about anything. I will be more than happy to answer any questions that any of you have. Stay tuned for the next episode as we cover the Blood Starved Beast, a poisonous butthole that has caused a lot of people to rip their hair out. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you guys next time.